Today's show is all about how to make blocks from the go ride a wave wall hanging. It's a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. Quilters, welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Sorry, I was watching my phone. <laughs> We're trying to see where everybody's from. All right, Emily's in the house. How are you, my friend? I'm great. I had a fantastic, relaxing New Year's Eve this Did you? weekend. It was great, yes. Good. had a sushi dinner. And it's kind of nice, these four-day work weeks that we've had for the last couple of weeks. I know, right? So I know. nice. Yeah, it's great. It's great. All right, so where is everyone watching from today? Okay, Maria is watching from work. Shh, we will not tell. Jackie's watching from Puyallup, and Pat is watching from Connecticut. Thanks for joining us today. All right, we have a couple of uh, new projects in our intro video. First up is Dion S. I love this, Dion. I love the 3D look. She used our half hexagons yes. to create that 3D look with those beautiful, beautiful colors. It's amazing. The okay, do you th I think it was probably a gift. I bet so. I mean, well, I don't know. It's laying on somebody's bed. Maybe it wasn't yeah, a gift. Maybe it was. I don't know. But it's either way, whoever the, the recipient or yeah. owner, you know, the, the keeper beautiful. of the quilt is very lucky. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love the bright colors. Next, we have this beautiful quilt from Karen J. Um, Karen did a beautiful job here. So the, it, does it not look like pink lemonade? It really does, like perfect for the, you know, mm -hmm. going into spring. It's, it's a happy quilt. It is a happy quilt, and it's a strip quilt. Uh, we use strip dyes, and I think Karen donated this as part of our Quilt the World campaign. She did sure she did. Not? Yes, she did. Thanks, Karen, for jo uh, for donating for us. All right, here is my photo of the day. It is canning jars. And the question of the day is, do you can your homegrown fruits and vegetables? So here in the Dream Studio, producer Joe is not only a producer, he is Green Thumb Joe. He grows beans and tomatoes and peppers, and they make, they can all of it. They make tomato juice and tomatoes. How about you? So cool. I wish I was that talented. I'm in an apartment, so I don't really have a garden oh, yes. to, to source from, but I love like making like preserves, like Ooh, yes. raspberry and cherry jelly are both like two of my favorite things in the whole world. I love that. I love that. Um, at our house, we are we grow tomatoes and peppers, and we do a lot of like salsa. Oh yeah, which is which is one of the um, fun things. My my oldest brother Butch lives um, in Seattle, and he has a huge backyard. And when his kids left home, he transformed his entire backyard into a garden. So half. I, half of it's a garden every year, so he goes back and forth, so, you know, the soil can rest yeah. and stuff. And he grows enough food and hands enough food that he lives on it all winter long. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, he's just pretty amazing. Wow. <laughs> so, all right, so in the question of the day, do you can your homegrown fruits and vegetables? Let us know. All right, be sure and check out the AccuQuote website for some great deals and discounts. Okay, today is all about the new Go Canning Jar 8-inch piece die. So today I'm going to give away one of those dies. Be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win. By registering, you'll receive event emails, and that way you'll never miss an exciting tutorial. The amazing Emily will announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of the show. I'm excited to start the new year with this great die. It's Me. such a fun, fun, fun die. Me too. Okay. So behind me is the Go Right Away Throw Quilt. As I said, it's a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. And our good friend, Amanda Harwood, made this. And I love everything about it. I just think it was so clever to create that ship in a bottle look. Oh, yeah. um, she used our Go Snails Trail die to make the waves look on it. Um, it is just darling. Gorgeous. So to make this project, you're gonna need the Go Canning Jar die, the Go Snails Trail die, the nautical medley die, that's how we're gonna make our boats in our bottles. Um, you're gonna need light and blue fabrics. Um, you can use white fabric for the jars or Amanda actually used kind of a light blue, so I'm actually gonna use like a light blue. 
and then you're gonna need yellows and browns and reds or whatever scrap fabrics you wanna use to make your boats. Perfect. I'm excited. Okay, so here's the block that it makes. Look at how fun this little block is. Gosh, look at and that. this is a super fast, really easy, if you can sew a quarter inch seam, you can make this block, okay? So it finishes to eight inches, and here is the die. The great thing about our dies, first of all, it's on a 10 by 10 die board, so it's gonna fit through our Go and our Go Big cutters. You wanna make sure you have a 10 by 10 cutting mat. And then, let's talk about the shapes. So the shapes are screen printed to help you keep track of your pieces. And we have specialized dog ears, quarter inch seam allowances. Look at these tiny little half square triangles. Yeah. They're gonna fit right here together, okay? And I think that this is the, probably one of the fastest uh, projects that I've ever made. Because really you can cut and sew a couple of these blocks because it's a great chain piecing block in like less than five minutes. Sure. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna grab a mat. Let's talk about our fabric. All right, so here, um, is shape E is the body of our canning jar. Here, I'll move it here. So many things already, okay? So shape E is our, our um, body. And I'm gonna use this light blue instead of a white, okay? I know, I kinda like it. And we can always cut six layers of fabric in one pass through the cutter. So what I did was I measured from here to here. And then Emily, I just cut the width of fabric. Oh yeah. Right, because sure. then watch this, because sometimes, sometimes it all works out. If I come back and forth, mm -hmm. it will fit exactly. Oh, there you I go. Gotta make sure that it's here in all the pieces. Right. Yep. It'll fit exactly six layers, which is the best use of our fabric. Exactly. Well, and there's and there's only ten in that whole quilt pattern, so it's kind right. of a nice, you know, we. Yeah. Get them all cut out and just get do them all the cut out. Yep. It's amazing. All right. So there's that. Now, A and D are right here, these side pieces. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to, you could measure this and, and subcut your fabric. Sure. I just cut a big strip. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just not that worried about it, okay? okay. I mean, it's going to have a little bit of um, layover. Okay, now all of you are all stressed, right? Because I have more than six layers here. But don't worry about it because there are no blades under here. Right, okay? right. So I'm not trying to cut more than six layers, okay? All right, you know what, let's just do four. Then we won't have to worry about it. That's true. All right, hold, hold please while I reposition <laughs> that. When I cut it previously, um, I cut out all my canning jar sections first. Because then it was not as tight on the die. So. All right, so I'm gonna just lay out here. Make sure you cover all your blades. All righty. Okay, and then shape B, I just did a little strip, right? Because we can just go back and forth on those little half square triangles. Okay. And then shape C, Emily, this is like the band mm -hmm. and the, then the top of the jar. Okay, okay. See, you were kind of wondering what that was, right? Yes. Okay, so um, I have a little yellow that I'm gonna use here. Cute. Which I think is gonna look perfect. And then um, just that background blue. Okay, so again, you can be creative, you could make your jars whatever color you wanna do. But since we're gonna put boats in them, we kinda wanted to have a nautical theme. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna put my mat on top and I'm gonna use this. Today I'm gonna use my Go Big, but you could use your Go fabric cutter if you needed to. And Emily, while I'm cutting pieces, tell me, I feel like we have so many quilters who are gardeners. Um, oh my gosh, we are getting a flood of answers on the question of the day, which I'm so excited. So uh, Tammy J says, not anymore retired from it, but Diane says, yes, I prefer, preserve veggies and eggs. Really? Yes. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Right? Okay, wait, here, I just wanna show you this. Look, there's nothing left of this, you know? I'm just gonna trim it here and then I'll be ready to do my last two. Okay. There you go. 
And then, okay, so veggies and eggs. Yes. Okay. Um, Gail actually does vegetables and meats as well. Uh, I have a friend who does that. She gets like, you know, um, a half a beef and then, uh -huh. you know, cooks them up and then cans it, you know, makes stews and chilies. And oh, how fun. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think I've ever heard of doing doing meats and, and you know, canning meats that yeah. before. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, Sherry does her own pickles, tomatoes, salsa, and applesauce. Oh, so I grew up in Yum. Seattle, and we used to make our own apple butter, <gasps> which you just slow cook it down, and then you put it on really good toast. That sounds I've awesome. not thought about that yes. for a hot minute. <laughs> we might have to have some here today. Okay. <laughs> All right, so look how fast I cut that whole block. All right? Now, here is my big pro tip. This truly is a great chain piecing die. So you would cut all 10 canning, you know, just do three at a time or yeah. four at a time, however you want to do it, but cut all of your pieces and then just sew them together, okay? Because that is really going to be the most efficient way to use your time. Yeah. And again, I, I, like I said, you could just cut so many of these in no time at all, okay? All righty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start by sewing our blue and yellows together. And the sick, ask me how I know this. The yellow is the band and then the blue is the background. Yes, that's right. Okay, when I make my test block, I, I didn't sew this correctly. You know, so I was like, oh, yeah, now I want to make sure I do that. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna start by sewing these together. I'm gonna to make sure I have my iron over here and it's nice and hot. All right, Emily, tell us what people are doing. Are they canning veggies and fruits? Oh, all of the things. Um, so Debbie says that her daughter-in-law is, is a canner and she shares. Oh, see, that's what you need, Emily. Exactly, sharing is caring. I just, just need to do this for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's important. Exactly. Oh, then Theta says, I can everything I can get my hands on, homegrown or purchased. It's a great hobby second to quilting. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. I do, um, I do love like, you know, fresh strawberries and fresh tomatoes and stuff from the garden. And um, our grandkids come over and um, we have starters for big giant pumpkins. For Halloween. Oh yeah. And so they plant them in the garden or in the yard because they really pretty much take up the yard. And um, for us, it, that is so much fun because then in the fall they can go and harvest their pumpkins. Oh gosh, All right. So now we're gonna press. Um, we're gonna press towards this background. So look how fast we did this. Okay. Wow. Super cute. Okay. Oh, we've got some fun questions coming in. Oh, please wow. tell us your questions. So, okay, so um, Mel, or excuse me, Melanie just got a gomi for Christmas. Congratulations, Melanie. How many, uh, she's wondering kind of how many dyes like out of the catalog can she use with her gomi? Oh, do you know, Emily? Isn't it like 70%? Yeah, like that? over 70% like of all of our go dyes mm -hmm. are gonna fit in that go me. Yeah, that's so any die that is six inches by 24 inches mm -hmm. will fit through that go me. That's a great question. Yeah, it really is. Um, she's, they're also wondering, um, oh, Don has a question about why do Bob's um, give, you know, they kind of uh, have the color, the sections very close to each other on the die, you know, uh -huh. with not too much room like between the shapes. Oh, so that's a great question. So can we look at this for a second? Okay, so um, I'm gonna tell you that we try to divide bobs by color. Yes. Okay, so right here, this big beautiful blue. So here, watch this. So if I wanted to, I could, ooh, boy. Hold on, I gotta make sure I have the right blue. So many blues. Because I, I wanna show you this because I think that it's really important that we, that we understand that, mm -hmm. okay? So really, truly, what I did was I could have 
Remember I made this strip here? Yes. Okay, but watch, look at this. So I could also have just measured across the top, right? And I have a ruler yes. and a rotary cutter. So then what I could have done was I would have measured from side to side. So that's nine inches. I would have just added a quarter of an inch on either side. And all of these shapes are about two inches. The biggest is two and a half, yeah. or biggest is two. Mm -hmm. So I could just take my fabric and go like this, mm -hmm. all right? And now I'm just gonna do five inches because two and a half and two and a half is five. Mm -hmm. I had to have producer Joe help me with a little <laughs> math this morning, <laughs> some days. Okay, ooh, don't be losing my pieces here. Okay. So then what I could have done is laid this piece here. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, sure, that's perfect. Okay. And then I could have and then I could have added a piece here. Now, the reason I didn't do it this way is because I wanted to show you where the yellow goes. Right. Yes. Right? Okay. But this is a perfect example of how you could have added just that small section of yellow yeah. and then just put this whole big and just just piece over the top. Into one layer. And then see now, look, it's cut all of those pieces. Perfect, yeah. Okay, so I just try to really look at my die and know that it's divided by color. Right. Okay, and then go, oh, okay, well, what's the best for me? You yeah. know, and I had a whole bunch of scraps um, that were big enough for like the half square triangles. So, oh, sure. you know, I did that. So that was a really good question because part of the look, see, I was gonna be missing those. Um, that's really a good question because so many times people are like, well, I understand the concept of a bob die, but you know, how is it divided? Right. Okay. So, and our, our pack, our pattern, will give you really great tips on how to cut the fabric, how to lay it out. Mm -hmm. There's a video, every time we release a die, there's a video saying, oh yeah, this is you know, how you put it together and that, that kind of thing. So yes. that was a great question. Well, and, because, and since they're so close, they're like closer together as well, it's kind of nice because if you, you know, when you're doing the background all, sta all the same color, just like you did with that strip, you right. know, to cut those two shapes at the same time, like you're not gonna waste, like you're right. not, the fabric isn't gonna be wasted. No, no. So. All right, so now we're gonna sew these tiny little half square triangles. Imagine trying to cut those by hand. And we're gonna sew them here to the corners, okay? And we have two on, I, I'm gonna do two because it's so much easier to do two at a time. Yes. Um, you can do four at a time if you wanted to. Whatever you wanna do. Yeah. But I find that two works great for me. And then I can just chain piece which is kind of nice. Oh, that's perfect. I'm a big chain piecer. Oh my gosh, so speaking of chain piecing slash sewing, um, MJ is wondering, not related to the canning topic, but I keep wondering how you can sew standing up. Oh, <laughs> um, that is part of my day job. <laughs> I'm normally okay. when I am home, I am sitting down. I know, right? It's funny because I'm, I'm like, I sew standing up at home, but that's just because the table that I use for quilting is... Right. Well, is taller and so. Right, well, so um, this sewing machine we have here is a Foth mm -hmm. and it right here in the back, this is called a walking foot. Right, right. And it helps move the fabric through continually mm -hmm. and evenly. And so sometimes if I have a really big quilt that I'm putting a binding on, mm -hmm. I will bring my um, quilt here to the Dream Studio and on this big table, I'll have the faff over here and my big quilt, and then I'll stand up and I'll add binding. Oh, that's genius. Because it's a nice big table to have it sit down there. Okay, speaking of Just binding. last Friday, <laughs> right. I was doing that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was just gonna say, speaking of binding, I love the fact that Amanda did the, the binding to match the lids of. Amanda, the whole project is brilliant. It really, really is. I mean, yes. it's, it's just such a nice like pop of color and it just, mm -hmm. you know, it just goes to show that binding can make 
such a difference. Oh, all the difference. You know, we talk about that a lot, about color. Mm -hmm. And in this particular dye, fabric is key. Yes. Because you could make, you know, the canning jars look like bottles or, you know, with ships in them. Or um, when we launched the dye, we showed you some ideas of using fabric that had like strawberries or preserves or, yes. you know, those, the one behind you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you. will you talk about it while well, I'm yeah. sewing quarter square triangles? Yes, because Catherine square triangles. actually asked what the pattern was behind me. Okay, first of all, this is one of our new pattern designers, right? Who, it, yes. Andy. Andy Knowlton of A Bright Corner. And I this, follow them on Instagram. Hi, Andy. <laughs> do you really? I do. Oh, I, long yeah. before I knew Andy, so there That's you go. awesome. Well, this is called the Go Fruit Preserves Throw Quilt Pattern. Um, I love the fact that they used... I believe that's the tumbler die. Yes, do you know create. what size? That's the small, the three, four, four excuse four. me. Yep. Um, and it's, I love how it just adds that dynamic and dimension to right. the quilt. It just, it's a really fun project. Just when you get a top left corner of that fabric that has words on it because it's my favorite. That's right. <laughs> I love fabric with words. Exactly. So it's, it has like feed grain stuff and yeah, it's just, I just think it's fabulous. Just so stinking cute. So, I no, that. I have, that is so funny because I have followed a bright corner for a while, long before Andy joined us. So Andy, thank you for joining us and being one of our go-getters and making that beautiful quilt. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna press my half square triangles towards my half square triangles, my fabric towards my half squares. Okay, this is such a fun, easy project. I know, right? And I love the fact that we've got so many people in the comments just, you know, about, you know, who are canning and they're just doing all of the things. I mean. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like quilters are one of those genres of, of creative, creative people who do other things like bake or absolutely. knit or. I know. How many times do we get caught talking about food? Like every other stuff. week. <laughs> every, <laughs> every other oh week. God. Last week, we were talking about Valentine's candy. Okay. That's right. All right. So there we go. All right. So look at how cute that is. Now we're going to add this shape D. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm going to cut two more real quick so I can do two. Um, that shape D to the sides. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, I was all thinking about my other things here. All right, so I'm going to measure. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to measure and just cut that fabric. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't, don't be lost. <laughs> don't be lost. <laughs> don't be lost. Oh, and no. then I have to make sure I have enough of these. So I'm just going to do three and a half inches and do it. Now, when I was making my blocks, Emily, mm -hmm. I um, wanted to make sure that you just want to make sure that you cut enough you just want to cut all the pieces, right? So when I was doing my other ones, you know, I made sure I had all of the pieces cut because then you can just chain piece. Chain piece away. For days, okay? It is our joy. <laughs> it really is. And, you know, if you're gonna do two at a time, make sure you have all the twos and all the things. Exactly. Okay? So now I'm just gonna do it here. And, oh, this is kind of a cool thing because now we can show you Oh, the you know, pieces it doesn't are underneath cut. the cutting mat, underneath the pressing mat, the wool mat. Yeah. I just saw them stuck to the bottom. Yeah. All the things are happening We're here on this thing. few years. Um, this is a great thing to show you that um, it's only going to cut where there's fabric in a mat. Right, exactly. It's not going to damage my dye. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to cut where there's fabric and a mat. Exactly. Give it a little love. Slide. Boy, is it humid in the Dream Studio today. We had a little it. slick weather here the last few days. Oh my goodness, yes, like making that turn onto the, the street just to come into the parking lot. I was like, oh yeah. Go, gave a little, uh, yep. little slide, don't lift, as you say. Yes, <laughs> holy smokes, I thought for sure. Okay, so I've just cut all my pieces. So do a little math when you're cutting your pieces, but for sure do them in twos, mm -hmm. okay? So now I'm gonna add the sides, and you wanna add the sides first. And then you want to sew the top, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what it says, Brock, before this? Go down. Back up, back up, back up, back up. 
before that question. <laughs> Keep going before that question. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm going to sew the sides. Just want to make sure I'm show, sewing it in the order that it tells us on the packaging. Right. All right, so Emily, why is AccuQuilt better than a rotary cutter? Oh, man. It, well, first of all, it's going to be 100% accurate no matter what, yeah. which is just, I mean, right there, like, perfect cuts mean perfect quilts, right? Yeah. Um, it is over 90% faster. I mean, I remember, I will never forget the demo when you and Erica went, you know, faced it, like, did your little competition on who could cut the same block faster. Oh, right. And it was amazing to just, like, just to see it side by side and go, oh, my goodness. Like, you could visually see how much longer it took to cut that, cut those pieces. Right. You know, with the rotary cutter. And, you know, the dog ears were still on the shapes. Which right. Which another step that just saves you so much time. Well, and I have to tell you, cutting off dog ears, that takes a minute. It really does. You know, I mean, you really have to stop and you have to make sure you're not cutting the fabric and, mm -hmm. you know, you cut off all the dog ears and it just takes time. And honestly, quilters, once I cut my fabric, it's cut. I don't have to cut it again. I can just sit down and watch a show or listen to a podcast or whatever I'm doing these days mm -hmm. and just so and I think that there is such value in that Absolutely. of being able to just stop you know just be able to sew so Completely. all right so now look I'm just adding my sides to my canning jar <laughs> so cute so cute oh my gosh we have some great questions coming okay, in okay tell us ask I us our questions loving these questions today okay Miss Tammy B is wondering so she's getting ready to purchase a um, a previous like a lightly owned go and some new a dye. gently used a gently used okay um, go and some dyes okay never used one do you have any tips for first time yeah users? so the first tip is buy new mats Yes. So go to our website today and get you some mats, cutting mats. And what's the key about cutting mats, Emily? Well, you just, they, they're going to last for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cuts. Right. And, but, you know, they are the consumable part of the product. Right. So that's going to be what absorbs all that pressure from those stainless steel blades. Right. So it's really important that you have, a, you know, a, a cutting mat that's in shape enough for right. you to be able to cut those squares. Right. Perfectly. And like this die here, it's a 10 by 10. So you want to have a 10 by 10 mat. You yeah. don't want to be using a big 10 by 24 mat. You can always use a smaller mat. If, for example, because <laughs> sometimes math, I <laughs> don't think really well and I just need to cut out shape A, I could certainly just pre-cut my fabric and use a smaller mat. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but so mats are crucial. And so while you're on the website today, I would look at the dies. You probably are going to need a 10 by 24, a 10 by 10, and a 6 by 12. Those are pretty much the standard sizes. Yep. Okay, so that's a great question. And then find some fabric you don't love and practice cutting. Practice cutting blocks. Just have fun so you can it. learn about lengthwise grain and don't cut more than six layers because holy smokes, that will make a mess. Yes, and my goodness, if you need any helpful tips and tricks, obviously we have so many videos on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Which we do. Are just filled with, you know, demonstrations and those specific tips for a given dyes and right. it's a fantastic resource. Yeah, open the box. Open the box is our big tip of the year. If you yeah. own a go cutter or a go big cutter and you have not opened the box, today's the day. You want somebody to tell you to open it, I'm happy to be that person. This is your sign from the universe. This is the sign from the universe is just open it up and find some fabric you don't love. I feel like quilters sometimes think, well, I'm going to cut that fabric wrong. And I say to quilters all the time, so before you had a go cutter, did you never cut fabric wrong? Because I sure <laughs> did. Okay, so just practice cutting and sub cut. Yeah. If you tell me that it's wasting fabric, I'm going to say, ooh, show me how you're cutting. You know, you don't want a whole, a whole big 10 by 10 piece. You just want a piece that's going to fit over the shapes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So watch the video. So go to the dies, and if it's a hunter star die, there's a video and so forth. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now look at here's what we're doing. So now we're going to finish our jars. I want you to know that I cut and sewed mm -hmm. two of these in eight minutes. Okay. Wow. When I was home hanging out with Pearl. Pearl's our cat. Okay. So now I'm going to sew... This is shape D, mm -hmm. or shape C, mm -hmm. and shape A, okay? So I'm going to add these to the side. 
because that's going to create our band. All right, Emily, do we have more questions? We surely do. Actually, someone was wondering the size of the half, of the half square triangles, which is shape B. And actually, we do have that on the website. Um, it's a one and a half wide by one and a half high. So it's a yeah. one and a half inch uh, half square triangle. Yes. Little is the answer. But I mean, all the other shapes, like that's what's so great about this die is they're such, it's such irregular shapes. You know what I mean? For, right. So those like, tiny little um, rectangles for the lid and then those big long rectangles mm -hmm. um, that you can use. We had some really great inspiration on the um, launch that um, Barbara Harper did and Marianne did. I mean, if you didn't, weren't able to watch the launch for the candy jar, all of our videos live on our Facebook and YouTube and channels. You can always go back and watch them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, you should. Because we have great, great videos there. Ooh, and Mary Jo is wondering as well, could you use a charm pack or a layer cake for this dye? Okay, let me tell you the answer is no. Okay. And the reason why, Marianne, is a charm square is gonna be, okay. A charm square is only gonna be five inches square, so really it wouldn't fit. Now a layer cake is 10 inches. So in theory, you could create opposite colored candy jars. Yeah. So like if you had a red piece and a blue piece, that's then you could cut them with your layer cake. But the thing about this dye that I love is just that it's so creative and you really do want to get two colors so that it looks like a canning jar. Exactly, yes. But that's a great, that's a great question. Oh, but here, let's measure. Hold please. Let's measure and see, well, uh, no, because these are five and a half by seven and oh, a half. Oh, right. But I am going to show you a die here in just a hot minute <laughs> that is perfect for layer cakes. <laughs> so hang on one sec. Okay, so I'm just sewing my jar lids. That was so much fun. Ooh, and let me see what other things people are canning as well. Oh, yes. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to press these out towards um, the A here. Okay, oh, Tina says that she makes homemade grape and wild plum jelly. Oh my gosh, that sounds so fancy. I've never had plum jelly, but <laughs> I, I have not I, either. I think I need some in my life right, right about now. I really do love homemade grape jelly. Same, oh my gosh, any. So good, yes, like homemade grape juice is so different than grape juice from a jar. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh my goodness. So okay, so look, here's our bands. Ta-da. We're gonna add them to our candy jar. Make sure you don't sew them the wrong way. Oh, wait. oh okay. my God, look how cute, quickly like that came together in a snap. Like, well, like I say, I sewed insane. two of them together ever so quickly. So <laughs> when it was just me at home hanging out. Oh my gosh, we have a, we have a joke from Miss Armida. Okay. Okay, so the, the it, why was the strawberry crying? Why was the strawberry crying? Okay, boys, any guesses? Why was the strawberry crying? Because I feel like she was in a jam or something. She was in a jam. Is that what it is? You are exactly right. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you win the prize. <laughs> okay. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. You know, hold on here. Oh, you're fine. I didn't, well, I didn't get a good quarter inch seam, so give me a second here. Uh -huh. You want to make sure you have that good quarter inch seam. Right, so it all lines up. So right otherwise, right. it's not going to come flowing together. Okay. Speaking of preserves, I will never forget, um, I, got to, I got to go on a trip to France when I was in high school. It was like a foreign, you know, an exchange student program, and I got to stay with a family. They took me to the south of France where they're at their house there. They grew their they have a house in the south of France. I know. So they oh lived in Lyon, but then they also had a house down in, Mar in Marseille. And they had an, an apricot tree in their backyard that they would then use to create their own apricot preserves. And they sent me home with a jar. And oh my gosh, it was like I love it. Happiest day of my life when I, ever, <laughs> when I got to try it. Okay. 
So I'm pressing away. And look, I have jars. Okay. So when you do it, I noticed when I was sewing it, um, I wasn't paying attention. I was listening to the south of France. You want to make sure that you get that quarter inch seam because otherwise this will not line up right. So you want the, you want the lid to match the jar. Yes. Okay. Well, I love that you went to France. That is super fun. That was, I know, that was like, I felt so lucky to be able to go and stay with a you know, family that actually lived there and you know, oh, yeah. really practiced. Oh my gosh, I was so tired though by the end of the day, every day from thinking in a different language. It was nuts. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, but yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to visit for sure. Um, I'm just looking here too at all these amazing, ooh, actually let me see if we have more questions because we have, yes. we've been having some fantastic questions today. And I love that we have quilters who are gardeners. I know, right? That is yep. so much fun. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. So Kim asks, so on the crazy quilt die, you press to both sides. How do you know when to press to one side like the mason jar die? Well, I try to press to the area of re least resistance. So for this one, oh boy, there are tons of strings. I really wanted my um, seams to show, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna press away. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have two. We have two jars for boats. So let's talk about boats. Oh, fun! <laughs> I just love it. Okay. Okay. So this is our Go Nautical Medley die. Oh, hang. Hold, please. Hold, please. And this is such a fun die. Let's talk about this die. <laughs> this die has three distinct shapes that I would never, ever, ever cut with my, a rotary cutter or with scissors, okay? So um, here, here we go, thank you. Okay, so we have the boat and the anchor and the ship's wheel. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call, um, this is an applique die. So we have free embroidery downloads for all three of these shapes if you have an embroidery machine. But we also have um, for purchase embroidery shapes that are divine. So from our team down in Lincoln, we also have some great ones from V-Stitch, all of those things. So now um, Amanda used uh, white and red and brown for her boat. I just, want, I just had a whole bunch of scraps. So this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use orange and purple and brown. Producer Joe picked our colors today. So what I've done is I've taken fusible, we have it available on our website. I have fused it to the back of my fabric. It's easier to see here because I have a pattern, okay? Now, once I fuse my fabric, I can only cut four layers of pre-fused fabric. Right. Normally I can cut six, okay? That counts as a half a layer, right? It does count as a half a layer. You okay. have to count it, okay? So now I'm gonna lay, um, here, I just did two. So I'll do two on this side for our boats. And now you don't have to worry about that lengthwise green because that fusible has stabilized our fabric. The thing you have to remember is that all your fabric needs to face up so that your boats travel in the same direction. Okay, that is crucial. All right, so I have my pieces. I'm gonna use a six by 12 mat. I, it's a little bit big for a six by six mat, so I'm gonna use the six by 12. Perfect. This will fit in all of our Go cutters, including that Go Me. All right, so here we go. Oh, and could we kind of go over, um, you know, which way does the length of the width of grain go? Oh, sure. Yep, but we'll talk about lengthwise grain. Okay, we're gonna give it a little love. The reason is, if you don't give it love, watch what happens. <laughs> it sticks. See, and half the fun is peeling it off the die to see the beautiful pieces. Okay, half the fun out. is doing that. It really is. Okay. All right, so look how so perfect they are. There we go. And probably not for these pieces, but for like this, I always save my pre-fused fabric. Oh yeah because sometimes I just need a little sliver of something. Okay? All right, so now I'm gonna lay out my first um, 
chart. Now, listen, quilters. I guess you could just randomly, haphazardly throw stuff down there. I'm going to do a little measuring, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so my jar is five inches wide, okay? So I'm going to probably come right here. Ooh, see what Amanda did, yeah. So right here at the bottom, at that inch, I'm going to, you know, line it up here. Sure. And then... I'm gonna find the center so it's seven, three and a half. So I'm actually gonna take a little pin and pin the center so that I know when I'm lining up stuff, hey, this is the center, okay? Otherwise your boats are gonna be wonky, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start here with my little, oh here, I should do it on both sides, right? That works, then I can find them. Um, do we have questions, Emily, while I'm lining up my fabric here? Yeah. Ooh, my eyes just got driven, just drawn into this comment from Susan saying she's canning elderberry elixir and syrup for winter colds at the moment. Oh my goodness. I am like blown away. Elderberry elixir sounds delightful. I really am. Oh, actually, Jenny does have a fantastic question that okay, Jenny. kind of is a callback to yesterday's project. Um, which uses, you know, the little go penguins to create the snow globes. Yes, the snow globe. And she's wondering what clear vinyl we would recommend. Oh, okay. I'm. Project. We're gonna. Hey, Emily, will you not let me forget to talk about that? Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna talk about it. So, see what I did? I kind of folded my boat in half. I want it to be right here, under, and then I'm just gonna lay my ruler over and make sure that it's pretty even. Oh yeah, look at that good. Yeah, I mean, you just want it to be even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be good. <laughs> okay. And oh then, oh, look at that. Look at that. I know, right? It's amazing how we make stuff here all the time. Applique is just so much fun. I've really been wanting to get into applique. And now oh like, yeah. Every time I see you do it, I'm like, okay, maybe I could do You could this. do that. It's so easy. You could do that. Okay, so I'm going to line up my sail there. And then here's my other sail. And this is kind of cool because I'm gonna do what we call raw edge quilting, which means when I have all my boats done and applique, then I'm just gonna take my sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch over the pieces. Okay. Oh, sure, to kind of help yep. stabilize them even more. Yep. So see, look, everybody's kind of straight here, straight there. Press that down. Now, sure. this is called pressing. This is ironing. You do not want to iron your applique. You want to press <laughs> your applique. I have to learn okay. that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, look at how fun that is. I love this. Joe, okay, Joe did a good job choosing our, choosing our uh, colors here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. And, oh, you know what? I am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold these. Okay, so you would do all of your 10 boats because mm -hmm. I want to get to the snail's trail part. Okay. So cute. I, but I'm not losing these pieces because I'm making this project, Amanda. I made Amanda's cute little penguin and snowflake one over the holidays. It was super cute. Oh, really? That was such a fun pattern. All right, so now here is this block here. This is our eight inch snail's trail block. Okay, mm -hmm. we have an eight, inch, this fits in the go. We have a bigger one that fits in the go big. You want the eight inch one because this block finishes to eight inches, okay? Perfect as that. And here's the block, okay? And I love this block. I do too. Because this is the ultimate just sit and chill and chain piece. Exactly. Okay, I just, I literally did. So what, what you want to do, um, let's look at the die real quick. You're going to need a layer of the light and a layer of the dark to go over all of these shapes. So somebody was asking about um, layer cakes. Yeah. Like if you wanted your layer cakes to be all scrappy, you could certainly use them on this die. Mm -hmm. So it has squares and then the rest are half square triangles. We've cut off the dog ears and we're gonna sew together our block, okay? So here's what I want you to see, because this, this is just magic, okay? So I'm gonna lay my centers down here. Oh, I think oh, I will. Oh, 
Charlotte's going to do uh, fill jars with fabric with fireflies and dragonflies. She was inspired by yesterday's project. As See, well. I oh love gosh. all of that. Okay, it blows my mind just how creative you can get with this with this dye. Oh yeah, like you can do so many different things, and the fact that like. They made a carrot and a pineapple. Oh yeah. And somebody was talking about a turtle on social media using like, you know, the jar part to, to create the little shell for the turtle. I mean, right. it's amazing. Right. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about this dye. So the center is a four patch. And here's the trick. You wanna just continue out with the color. So here I've done the blue. Here I've done the light blue, the dark blue. Yeah. That's, you want to really follow the instructions. And this is another one we're just going to press it completely away. So we're going to come right here and we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, we're going to go here and then look. Okay, so I'm actually going to chain piece a little bit of this so you can see it because this is magic. This die and all of these pieces, I can't even imagine trying to cut these pieces by hand and sewn. Because look, as I put it together, it is perfect. It really is. It really, really is, okay? So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna do these. And Emily, don't let me forget to talk about vinyl, okay? Yes. Because I'm gonna do this for about two minutes. Right. And then don't forget if you have questions, be sure and let us know, because this, this is such a fun project. I literally um, could just sit and sew. I called Erica the other day and I was like, hey, what are you doing? And she was telling me, I go, I listen, I am just sitting and sewing um, snail straw blocks. It is just a beautiful thing. <laughs> and just make sure you have a quarter inch seam. And again, look at how I'm chain piecing. See, that's okay? so nice. So am I going the right way? Yes. See how it's gonna, pull out there. And I always sew from the top and then I kind of put my finger here so I know where that little um, point is. Mm -hmm. I just find it easier for me. Some people sew with the bottom up. I, I like to sew with the top up. You know, and it's, it's, and I see that you're doing the opposite sides first, you know, it's yes. like instead of going around in a circle, you're doing opposite sides and then opposite sides. Yes, it's and the reason you want to do that is see, look, now it's lined up perfectly. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to do this last one here and then um, we'll talk about vinyl. Okay, so Snail's Trail, we have a go big version and we have a go version. The one you want for this project is the go version. And it's just delightful. Well, so what a great way to use our dyes. Seriously, well, another bob that I thought that would be like pretty cool to be, because it's very on theme, would be the Storm at Sea. Yes. And it can, that dye, you can make either a nine inch finish block or a 12 inch finish block. Right. And so it's like, you could do a little, you know, like a little tiny sashing around your canning jar, or you could do a couple, you know, an inch more to create that 12 inch. I mean, perfect, perfect idea. Yeah, use a strip die. We have 18 strip dies. Mm -hmm. And you could, you could just add a little sashing around yeah. it and then use the storm at sea block. Great idea, Emily. Right? I mean, you got ships in a bottle. There's ships in know. a bottle. They should have storm at sea. Okay. <laughs> I love that dye. All right, too. so see how that worked? And look. These are those dog ears we talk about that AccuQuilt cuts off. When they're on these half square triangles, um, we just sew over them because they're not on the edge, which is kind of fun, they're in the middle. So look at how easy I was able to sew these pieces. So okay. quick. All right, let's talk real quick about vinyl. Yesterday we cut some, ooh, I'm gonna move this because this is screaming hot. Guys, it's hot, hot. Sometimes it's just hot, today it is screaming hot. Okay. okay, and yesterday we cut some, so hold on. I have it. Oh, and actually, Deb, speaking of the snail's trail dye, um, Debbie is wondering if you can make that block without the bob. If you have two sizes of cubes, if you have the four inch cube and the eight inch cube, here's my pro tip. Just get the die. Because you have to have the center or the, 
These are for the four inch cube and then these are from the eight inch cube. Sure. So it shapes two and five <laughs> and two and five and then three. Yeah. That's a great question though. But yeah, if you have a two, if you have the four and the eight inch cubes, you bet, make snails trail. Okay, this is what I bought yesterday at the craft store a couple of days ago. It's just on a big roll, okay? And the whole roll, I did a half a yard, because that was the minimum I could cut, was $2. Oh so if you're looking to make that cute little project with the snow globes, if you wanna make snow globes out of your canning jars, we have some great patterns for that. This is my strawberry fabric that I cut. So really you could. Now yesterday, this is really nice and thin, mm -hmm. okay? So I just cut one layer. And the tip is you don't wanna put pins in it because then it's gonna leave holes. But yesterday somebody said, oh, I can't really see, but look at this. See? Oh yeah. It's just the lighting here in the Dream Studio is so good that it's, it was hard to see. But once you put that clear vinyl over, that shadow goes away. Right. See? Oh, how cute. Okay. So I would cut one layer at a time. And remember, our tip was that you want to lay that clear um, vinyl over the um, shape E and then use painter's tape to hold it down. Right, right, Because right. it's so slicky. Okay. That's a quilting it's term, slicky. slicky. Like, All right, <laughs> quilters, follow the pattern to lay out your blocks, alternating boats and waves, add vertical and horizontal borders, finish the project by adding batting between the top and the backing. Pinner base quilt is desired and use your favorite binding method. I am making this project just a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna add more boats and more um, waves and it'll be super cute. Be sure and share your projects with us on all of our social media platforms. You want to use that hashtag AccuQuiltBuilt. All right, Emily, we have had such a great show. Did you not love this whole project? I loved everybody's answers. I loved the question. I loved the questions people had today. I feel like we learned so much about this dye and so many great tips and tricks. So I'm very happy. So Emily gets the best part of the job. She gets to announce our winner for yes. today. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right. So today's winner of the Go Canning Jar dye is drum roll, please. Lori S. of Rapid City, South Dakota. Congratulations, Lori. You're gonna love this dye. And don't forget, this is the dye to try for the month of January. It's the Go Canning Jar 8-inch Pieced dye. It is only available till the end of the month or while supplies last. You wanna make sure you get yours today. Hey, here in the Dream Studio, we have Brock and Justin and Joe and my good friend Emily. Offsite, we have Morgan and Katie and who's helping us? Is Laura. Lauren helping us she sure today? Is. Thanks, Lauren, for helping us. We will Thanks see you next so time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Hey quilters, join Lynn and Erica on Tuesday, January 10th at 12 noon central time as they are launching a new product that will really get your gears spinning. And then be sure to join Erica next week for AccuQuilt Live. I will be on vacation. Be sure and register on the events page for the chance to win. And on behalf of our entire team, have a great day. We'll see you next time.